So we come back once again to a book which I'm praying will become the basis for a tremendous building of an understanding of how God works our physical universe and how in fact that we see for this tremendous work of Rabbi Yaakov Cronenberg, one of the really nicest people that you could ever find. Uh, it's just absolute basis. It is the foundation of everything that we pray will come afterwards. Now, he's been talking about some really deep cons uh, Kabbalistic ideas over here. Remember that we're always keeping in mind that you have a combination of the name of Yud Kei Vav Kei, and that the understanding, the basic understanding, is, is that the light of God, which is a light that we cannot possibly understand, shines through letters towards us. Now, the world is really formed out of letters. It's much more loose than we think. It's not solid at all. You're standing, where are you right now? Are you listening to this? You're driving a car, you're, you're in your office or house. Are you standing still? Are you moving? So we understand that we're actually moving. We're moving at a rate of a thousand miles an hour, but we're all moving together. And as a result of that, it's all natural that it appears to be like it's solid, but in fact it's constantly, constantly changing. So in this situation is where we find ourselves. And he talked the last, in the last year about the 13 attributes of mercy right up here which are connected connected with the division of the beard of the most. You have to understand that the, the finished product is the human being. According to the degree, the human being is actually a metaphor for the formation of the most basic principles of, of life. This is that life itself has a beginning, it has a middle part, and it has a bottom part where it actually reproduces and is able to continue on. But this comes from a very, very high place. And that high place can be accessed through what he's called the 13 divisions of the beard of the most inner being that we can fathom. That is, what is the interior aspect of our neshamas come from a place which is called Eric Anpin, which really, as the re understands it, is uh, the division. Uh, what is it? Is that the right word? Is the, uh, is the core. That's the right word around which all reality is based. So it's impossible to understand this. And we understand how it is that God is in everything because everything is wrapped around Eric Anpin. So trying to understand that he has a beard, the beard is actually a way of diminishing the amount of light which is coming from the head of Eric Anpin, if that's possible to say, and diminish that light and diminish it more and more and more as a pattern so that light could actually ultimately come to us. And here we have over here, Yaakov Cronenberg, who really, really has taken that light and brought it down closer to us. The number one division is called Kale. So in other words, there are 13 different divisions of the beard of Aragonpin. And Kale is the name of God. It usually translates just the word God. This is the first part of the beard, which is called the sideburn. It's like the first form of a beard which a young boy gets. It's, if you've ever seen a young man in the, in the Lubavitcher Hasidim, where they start growing beards right away, or other Hasidim. It's the top of the ear, or a little bit into the ear. And from there, the sideburns come down until the area of the jawbones. Then at that place, there's the second division, of the, which is the mustache, which is also part of the beard. And those are the first two parts of the beard that you see in a young boy. Now, corresponding to what he's saying here is that translated into English from the famous Idris, the Idris, which are especially uh, deep bits of, of Zohar. Uh, this is really a translation of the beard of Eric Anpin is found there. The third division of the beard is the middle of the mustache where there is a bridge underneath the nose where there is no hair. But you can't see it in every man, just in some men. And that divides the mustache into two distinct parts. And it is known that people who have the empty space there are very intelligent. Well, I'd better check my beard here, but I 
think that I don't have this distinct pattern. The fourth div division is underneath the lower lip. There's some hair that runs parallel to the lower lip and is very close to the lower lip and is called the lower mustache. The fifth division is a line in the middle of the lower mustache, which divides it into two pieces, just like you had the one in the middle of the upper lip. Just as that third part divides the mustache into two pieces, that's that fifth division. Now, he's going through these things, and these are facts that one has to understand of the origins of all reality. The sixth division of the beard is underneath the sideburns where the sideburns end. The best example for that is found in uh, where it, in America, where people go along with what is called lamb chop beard. Well, they did it anyway. I don't know what it's like, what it was like when he wrote this, but that was a, a style then. The only division of the beards they have are the sideburns and what comes out of the sideburns. It's called the Rav Chesed. That's the sixth division. The seventh division of the beard is the part of the face where there is no hair, like between the ear and the nose the area of the cheek. The eighth division of the beard is what is called the mazola elion, the upper mazel. The, 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 there are two divisions of the beard that have the name of mazel. So there's two places where the word mazel comes from. So when we say mazel tov to someone, it should be a good mazel. Mazel means planet also. So when, it, when you say that mazel, that you're talking really about the flow that's supposed to, of a blessing that's going to come from here, the eighth division of the beard, and they're called tikkunim. So they come in pairs. So they're like the two sideburns, the two parts of the mustache, the two parts, so we have all kinds of two parts here, uh, to the lower mustache, uh, two cheeks, two lamb chops. Let me get this back up. Two to the lower mustache, two cheeks, two lamb chop beards. The ninth to the thirteenth are single parts. So it's a little bit hard to explain, but he's explaining it. So the main division is the 8th and the 13th division. So that's basically what we want to say. We want to say that there are two Maslows. One of the Maslows, Maslows is called the 8th part, the, the eighth Tikkun. The other one is the 13th Tikkun. They represent male and female as well. So the Maslow El Yon and the Maslow Tachto. A beard that grows to its full length reaches the heart area. Let's say that your beard could do that. And like the bottom hair that comes out of the chin, there is also a similar part of hair coming down, and it also grows down to the heart. And these two eventually meet there. So we have the eighth division. So these two pieces are called the Mazel Elyon and the Mazel Takdon, and they are of the eighth and the thirteenth divisions of the beard, and they are called the Mazlin or Mazlot, depending on how you want to look at it. So... He says, the, the, so this is really something fundamental to know. Now, what to do with it is another question. But or to understand this fundamental parts of the Idris, or basically that's where it's coming from, all talking about Eric Anpin, the most panemistic beginning of reality. These are the 8th and the 13th divisions of the beard, and they call the Maslin or Maslos. These Maslin take all the energies of the beard and send them down to the lower world by channeling them and making them smaller. The, that is the light within them smaller. The ninth division of the beard is between the two, these two parts, like uh, in the middle of the hair, which comes down to the heart area. The tenth division of the beard is going to be all the little groups or units of long hair underneath the chin, underneath all this hair coming down from the chin to the heart. The eleventh division is the underneath is underneath the long hair where there is the smaller hair the smaller groups of hairs, the part underneath the chin, which is next to the heart, and is called the mazel tachto. Now, these two, so he says, these two mazlin, the mazel al elyon and the mazel tachto, are going to meet, they're going to meet at the heart, and they're like a male and a female. They are going to have some relationship, and thus by doing the, that, they are going to send energies to the lower world. Let's translate this relationship. They're going to make a yichud to become one at this place. As a result of this, we understand that the whole purpose of studying Kabbalah is to make oneness. The whole purpose of the forces of the Satan, of the other side, are to make divisions. Just think of adultery for a second, which is the worst possible division. It breaks all hearts. And it's the ultimate separation. 
So just think about that. And so he's saying like that they're going to have some relationships. What's the relationship? It's called zivu. They become one. And thus by doing that, they are going to send energies into the lower world because that's how he's saying that you take something which is, let's say, uh, actually it's the opposite of this, but I'll use, I, I use the terms anyway. Something that's very big. And you want to take that very big thing, but you can't give it, let's say, something that's gigantic, like the Empire State Melt, but you can't put it on my shoulder. I would be crushed by it. As a result of that, the the concept, the inner concept, has to be mismayed, because it's like something so gigantic. What is it gigantic of? It's gigantic of nothing. So the point is, is that you have to take that nothingness and squeeze it down and cover it with physicality. This is what happens in Kabbalah. But to bring that back together again, that's the ultimate, that's the ego we're talking about, taking place of the heart. I think this is what Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, the Ramak, means when he says these 13 divisions are the sources of the 12 permutations of God's name. We went through this before. It's a bigger part of what he's been talking about. In other words, the source of these 12 permutations of the starting part of the whole system of the 13 divisions of the beard is the Moach Stimor. Now, what is the Moach Stimor? So what he's seeing is like this. Reach in your mind and go backwards to where the origin of your life comes from. And it's just talking about the relationship between your parents. But actually, their parents had parents and parents and parents. And that means to say that as you go backwards, you're getting deeper and deeper and deeper into this. This has a slight interruption of my private of thought for reality keeps coming back in. There is an origin, and he's describing it. And there's a place called the Morsi Mor, which is called the Steel Sealed Brain. The hidden mind, this is the mind of Keter Crown, which is the crown of Atzilut, which is the most perfect place in relationship to God. And this is the high world which nobody could understand, not even Moshe Rabbein. When the future of Rabbi Akiba was known to Moshe, he asked God, how can that be? How can such a great man receive such a cruel death and reward? We go over this and see this many times. It's a very heavy, heavy, heavy question. And God said to him, be quiet, because this is something that no human being can understand. In our little, in, we are motivated to live. As a one thing, we want to live, if we're 106 years old, we want to make the 107. It's a built into us. And here we see that the multiple reward of a real, really fine person has had his, his flesh flayed off of him while alive. The screaming and the fire and the whole business. How could that be understood? So Hashem says, it's not for you to understand because your whole thing is to want to try to stay all physically alive. There's something else beyond that. Everybody in the world has a different challenge and a different purpose. And we don't really know why it is hidden. When we see the manifestation of this hidden energy, we don't understand it. And it is somehow the opposite of what we would consider fair. We'd expect that good happens to the righteous and bad happens to the evildoers. This is what we think ourselves because we think that our opponents should fall. And we call them evildoers. Now, the tutor actually this, you know, tells you what an evildoer is and how their behavior, what their behavior is like. We do nothing but talk about that. So that's what we expect. Good should go to good. And we're always thinking these bad guys out there, they should get theirs. But in fact, it doesn't work that way. But sometimes it is not like that. And sometimes you see that the wicked thrive and the righteous suffer. This is a difficult reality and a hard concept to accept. And some people have a challenge accepting this as taught in our religion. Because that is indeed the fundamental question. Let's say, what is the question? He's going to phrase it right here. If God is good, then how come good people sometimes suffer immeasurably, really. And bad people sometimes don't. That's a big problem. 
course, Judaism deals with it a lot. But on the other hand, what's the satisfying answer for those of us who are mortal and want to live? This is Baruch Fleischman, and you've been listening to the Tikkun Elevator Kolal. This is a tremendous, tremendous safer written in English by Rabbi Yaakov Cronenberg. Astrology, how the world turns.